I want to welcome you uh, this morning to our fifth annual conference and the third to take place on the campus of the University of the West of England. In particular, as Guy has just done, I want to extend the warmest of welcomes to our new colleagues who will join the Federation in September. Uh, colleagues from Bath Community Academy, from Bedbrook Primary Academy, Sunhill Academy, Froomevale Academy and Minerva Primary Academy. It is really good and great to have you here after the journey that we've been through this year to get that ready for September. I want to start by thanking every single person in the room. Every one of you has made a unique contribution to the success of your academy and the CLF. And I want to thank you for the extraordinary time, talent, effort and commitment that you show every day that gives our students the best opportunity for sex, success, not only in their academy. That was a good one, wasn't it? <laughs> if there was one word in my talk I wanted to get right this morning, it was that one. And I want to thank you for the time and the effort that you put into giving our students the best opportunities, not just in their academic lives, but also in their personal lives. Not every child finds school and growing up easy. And the work that we do together to help each student find a safe haven and an and, and understanding adult to support them is part of the legacy that the Federation and its academies is creating. We began five years ago with a partnership between JCA and BBA, who both became academies on the same day, September the 1st, 2007. At that time, there was no history of collaboration between the schools, and it took time to grow the trust and understanding that enables the Federation partnerships we see today start to flourish. In September 2009, Bristol Metropolitan Academy joined the Federation, and we became a multi-academy trust sponsor that you recognise today. Staff were employed centrally by the Federation, and we started to see colleagues working in more than one academy during the working week. September 2009 also saw Rolls-Royce and the University become our joint sponsors and their support and passion for what we are working together to achieve has been significant in our success. In 2011, Hans Price and King's Oak became members of our family and in 56 days time our new partners will formally bring our family up to 10 academies. If the Federation is going to be successful, it has to be capable of supporting its academies to enable them to improve more quickly than if they could than if they worked alone. It has to be capable of providing career development opportunities for staff that complement those that exist in the individual academies. This might be as a result of training and sharing ideas, or spending time in another academy, or simply taking on a promoted post within the Federation. And thirdly, I've always believed that if these objectives were achieved, one of the benefits would be that more schools would be willing to join us, and as you can see today, this is becoming a reality. However, this remains a federation that needs to be rooted within its community. As chains grow dramatically in size across the country, the risk becomes greater that the interactions between schools and staff are lost. And the losers in this scenario were the children who do not gain from the benefits of having staff who work together in close geographical collaboration to continually improve the quality of their experience. And it's for this reason that we will never be a national chain of schools and why I believe we will continue to do our best work in Bristol, Bath and Western Supermare. Our vision is collaboration for outstanding achievement and this is the right one for us to have. The Federation is not a school. There are no students that wear a Federation uniform. There's no single building that large numbers of staff and students go to every day. Instead, it's the remit of the Federation to build capacity in its schools to make it easier to achieve success. It's the remit of the Federation to work together to develop new ideas jointly and to share those that work for the benefit of more students. It's the remit of the Federation to find the solutions to challenges that exist in some or all of our academies because a challenge in one academy today can become a solution in another one tomorrow. And it's for this reason that next year we have earmarked the fourth Thursday of every term as Federation Network Night, which is in response to the demand for more time to be created for staff to meet more regularly. And these evenings will be led and managed by our team of Federation Specialist Leaders in Education. The challenge for all of us in the room this morning is to take this collaborative gene and turn it into an exceptional body of practice that enables us not only to take responsibility for our own classes and our own students, but to use the talent and creativity of 600 adults to create an exceptional learning community for the 5,000 children who attend Federation schools. For me, it makes no difference whether a child has grown up in Speedwell, in Fishponds, in Kingswood, in Twerton or the Bourneville. 
Our responsibility is to give these children exactly the same life chances as those born in more affluent neighbourhoods or who come from backgrounds where parents can afford to pay for their child's education. In 2026, when our current Year 7 students are 25 years old, they will be competing with the best and they will be leading their communities and making a difference and we will be able to say that we played a part in that. In simple terms, I want a reception teacher in 2026 in one of our primary academies to be able to see the impact of their outstanding teacher that took place 14 years earlier when that child receives their A-level results. I want the A-level teacher in 2026 to recognise that the grade A in English, history or maths that one of their students achieved is due in no small part to the work of that reception teacher. The Chinese proverb that states it takes a village to raise a child has never been more applicable to our context and is one that we should cherish. So what is it that our Federation village needs to do if it is to raise the children of the Federation as confident and successful learners? I see it in the following ways. We need to work intelligently so that we can make more sense of the developmental journey from preschool to post-16 in university. We need to replicate the best practice across the phases to challenge ourselves to think differently about the way we deliver learning to children. We need to rethink what we mean by transition. It cannot just be about what happens between year six and year seven, because that runs the risk of ignoring the other equally important transition points, from nursery to reception, from year two to year three, from year 11 to post-16, and post-16 to university. We have to be outstanding at helping students to use their skills and knowledge to navigate this route to their success. And finally, we need to completely remove any excuses for underachievement. If we are going to be the educational provider for 5,000 children between the ages of 4 and 19, education failure is not an option. There is no other face in the mirror to look at other than ours. We are accountable for making the difference for all of our students, and I've got no doubt that this is a challenge that we're going to meet. To finish, I want to reflect a little on the past 12 months and in doing so, look ahead to next year. There have been highlights every year since the Federation started, but this year has been different. The trust and confidence of staff towards the Federation has increased. I have lost count of the number of informal interactions I have seen taking place that have required no input from me or any of the Academy principals. During the past two months, we have had two important inspections in the Federation. In May, Bristol Metropolitan Academy was inspected and was judged to be good in all categories. Schools up and down the country have faced the new Ofsted framework with trepidation, yet the staff at BMA, under the inspirational leadership of Steve Taylor and his team, met this challenge head on. The improvement in results, the improvement in teaching standards, the improvements in behaviour have helped to create the positive can-do culture that I see every time I work within the academy. This outcome is a true reflection of the impressive and significant progress made at the academy since 2009. Having assumed that this was our Ofsted fix for the year, it was with rare delight that I heard on the June the 25th that Hans Price was to receive its post-opening monitoring inspection. But yet, once again, the staff at Hans Price pulled out the stops. The two-day inspection confirmed that the Academy is making good progress. The combination of the much-improved GCSE results that we're likely to see there this summer with the improvements in behaviour and teaching show that the resilient, creative and student-centred leadership of Armando and the quality work of the staff has made the difference we believed it would. We only received the draft report on Wednesday, but it is an absolute delight to read. In both reports, there are positive endorsements of the work of the Federation. In the Bristol Met report, it states, the effective Federation-wide learning community is being well used to drive further improvements in the Academy, whilst the Hans Price report states, the quality of support from the Cabot Learning Federation is excellent and valued by the Academy leaders. This is all great news, and it takes us two steps closer to our goal of having ten outstanding academies within the Federation. Armando, of course, was with me at the start of this journey when he was appointed principal at BBA in 2007, and he was the first of our principals to take on a second headship in the organisation. He's now been joined in that group by Adam Williams, who will be the new principal at Bath Community Academy in September. His work at JCA has been impressive and he has met the challenge of maintaining the outstanding status at the school. 
The leadership skills that you need to sustain this level of performance are as critical as those that you need to improve a school. The fact that Adam is ready and determined to lead BCA to the same level of performance as JCA says as much about him as a person as it does about his leadership skills. And finally we arrive at today. This is an event that a huge amount of planning goes into and I want to make sure that the day is vibrant and exciting but also relevant and thought provoking. I am hugely grateful to the 50 plus colleagues who have given their time to prepare and contribute to workshops. As you can see from the programme, they are varied and as much as we could make them, and I hope you will agree that there is something here to inspire you. In your packs, you will find an evaluation form which I urge you to complete so that it can inform what we do next year. On the reverse of the evaluation, there is an expression of interest form where it would be good to know the ways that you would like to access further development for yourself next year, as well as outlining to me how you believe you could make a contribution to the next stage of the Federation. If you could complete this as we work through the day and leave it in the boxes at the end, I would be very grateful. Last year, we were moved by the short presentations from students from the Federation, and students are a core feature of today. I join in with Guy in thanking King's Oak Academy Year 7 to Year 9 students for their fantastic opening to the conference, but there will be opportunities to see students performing later this morning and this afternoon, as well as talking to us direct from this stage in a moment. But I want to start the conference this year with a reminder that we are one team working to educate children from the age of 4 to 19. And with that in mind, what better way to start than hearing direct from the children? This is what education means to them and what excites them about learning. Thank you for listening and thank you for all that you do.